Welcome back. Today, we're on verdict watch for an expected ruling in Trump's civil fraud case here in New York. A judge has already ruled the former president inflated his wealth on financial documents to make deals and secure loans. But we could learn today if he will be forced to shut down his real estate empire in the state while paying tens of millions of dollars to authorities. Meanwhile, in another pivotal Trump case, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis is set to return to the witness stand today. Willis, who is prosecuting Trump in the Georgia election interference case, has had the legal tables turned on her amid claims of misconduct. Yesterday, she testified about her romantic relationship with special prosecutor Nathan Wade, sparring with de the defense attorney. Ms. Willis, I'll ask you just listen to the answer, or excuse me, the question and keep the answers confined to the questions as best you can. I think you'll have more than enough ample opportunity on uh, when the state is well, able to It's highly offensive when someone lies on you, and it's highly offensive when they the try judge. to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them, and I take exception to it. And in yet another major Trump case, the former president's very first criminal trial date has now been set for March 25th. This after a New York judge denied his bid to dismiss his hush money case, in this one, Trump is accused of paying adult film star Stormy Daniels over $100,000 ahead of the 2016 election to keep quiet about their alleged affair. It'll be the first criminal trial for a former U.S. president in history. Yesterday, Trump addressed reporters outside the courtroom. Instead of being in South Carolina and other states campaigning, I'm stuck here. It's an election interference case. Uh, nobody's ever seen anything like it in this country. It's a disgrace. It's a disgraceful situation, actually. And we'll just have to figure it out. I'll be here during the day and I'll be campaigning during the night. Attorney and CBS News campaign reporter Katrina Kaufman is here in studio to chat about these legal battles at hand. Katrina, thanks so much for being with us here. Uh, let's start with today's expected civil fraud trial verdict. We're looking at this because the judge actually already ruled that the former president did inflate his wealth. So talk about what the New York Attorney General is really looking for here and what the consequences could be. The consequences could be really big for Donald Trump. She is asking for $370 million. This is a huge amount, especially on top of a recent E. Jean Carroll verdict, which was $83.3 million. Mm -hmm. And there was a previous $5 million one. So these bills are really racking up mm -hmm. for Trump. And she also has asked for a lifetime ban on Trump in New York's real estate industry, which is huge for him. Mm -hmm. This is where he started as a businessman and for a five-year ban on both of his sons. So that also hurts his family. And part of this is guided by an effort to prevent recurrence. So it's also interesting that there was a special monitor report recently. She had been appointed to oversee how they were doing their financial dealings at the Trump Organization mm. moving forward. And she also found continuous errors in these documents, a questionable loan. So those could factor into the judge's decision as well. Okay, very interesting. Uh, moving to Georgia now, Fonnie Willis is going to be taking the stand there again today. Again, this was yeah. really fiery. Uh, tempers really flared during the testimony <laughs> yesterday. So set us up with what to expect today. So we're going to start with Fonnie Willis on the stand. We know that her father is also going to take the stand today, mm. and he could be a very crucial witness because there's a claim that Way, uh, Willis and then Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor, she's accused of having a romantic relationship with, lived together. And supposedly Willis's father was actually living with her during that time. Okay. So he could be important for that. Yesterday there was also a lot of testimony about the financial dealings between the two of them and she was saying that her father always told her to have six months of cash on hand at home and so she always paid weighed back with cash so I feel like we could see testimony about that today as well the state is supposed to have another witness we don't know who they said it would probably take four or five hours this could maybe even bleed into Monday and as you said yesterday it was very dramatic so we'll see what happens today okay and there is more Katrina yes. the first criminal trial of former President Donald Trump that is now as we know set to begin on March 25th here in New York um, how could this trial impact his presidential campaign so Trump has to be in court so this trial is going to start March 25th. It's supposed to go about six weeks, and Trump needs to be in court every day. So I think he even said right outside the court in that clip he played, he'll be in court by day and campaigning by night. Mm. And so this is really interfering with his ability to campaign. And 
His lawyer was actually saying yesterday that he was asking the judge to push the trial. He said that this is election interference, that they're going to miss, I think it's 42 primaries during the time they're trying to prepare for the case starting March 1st and when the case is supposed to end. And there was sort of an interesting moment in court where the prosecution, one of the lawyers stood up and said, actually, you sent me an email last May where you said that if we started the trial March 25th, that would be the least disruptive to the campaign for you. Mm. So he really countered that right in court. But yes, Donald Trump will be sitting in a courtroom starting March 25th and not full time on the campaign trail because of this case. Okay, we'll keep a close eye on this. Katrina Kaufman, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.